Welcome back YouTube. All right, so we fit look at how Slapjack changed everything. Let's get it. Now, obviously, I watched Slapjack as a kid, so I'm interested. Music. It's time to put some respect on Flapjack's name. It is not often that a single cartoon has such a massive and long life. Hey, respect my Crippin Cut. ...lasting impact on the entire cartoon industry. Sure, you have the classic genre-defining cartoons. Powerpuff Girls, Spongebob, these were all massive successes that changed the industry for... I really did not like none of them. Spongebob or Powerpuff Girls. Spongebob was gay as fuck, and Powerpuff Girls... They just as annoying as fuck. Ugh. Bob, these were all massive successes that changed the industry forever. We know these classics, but there's one show that quite literally created the entire world of cartoons today, and that show is the marvelous misadventures of Flapjack. Guys, this that, is the story that was the new Flapjack changed everything. He was that new. The year is 2001. After graduating from CalArts, the cultiest school in animation, Third Van Orman found himself finding a job at Cartoon Network. Working in the animation industry, bright eyed and bushy tailed, Thurp. Pulling from his own childhood the sauce. Like Panama City, Florida, Thur He had the sauce. Hold on. Know these classics, but there's one show that quite literally created the entire world of cartoons today. And that show is the marvelous misadventures of Flapjack. Guys, this is the story of how Flapjack changed everything. The year is 2001. After graduating I was LRC, two years old. Animation, Thurp Van Orman Dang, Flapjack can run out. Network. Working in the animation industry, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, um. Thurup had an idea. Pulling from his own childhood, living in Panama City, Florida, Thurup reflected on an old fantasy he had of living on a dock and going on adventures. Quote, when I was 14, I wanted to spend the summer on an island just off the coast, living off the land for three months. I wasn't even going to bring a pocket knife. I was going to make everything I needed out of shells and eat raw sea urchins and stuff like that. I, I love this man. All of these ideas culminated in the perfect creative storm, creating a cartoon concept that he dubbed the marvelous misadventures of Flapjack. Boy, that was the show. A boy and a captain living in the mouth of a whale, of course. He took his big ideas to the execs at Cartoon Network. He went in front of them and with all his heart and soul pitched his dream and got rejected. According yeah. to Thurup, the pitch went actually pretty awful. They didn't take me too seriously. The person I pitched to was watching TV while I pitched. Even though they gave me good notes and stuff, I realized no one would take me seriously until I had some experience. Not letting this setback dissuade him from making Flapjack a reality, Thurp took this as a learning experience and got back to work. The most crucial thing he got out of this whole process was feedback. And he listened to all of that feedback, took it to heart. He needed more experience before he could pitch again, so that's exactly what he got. According to him, I started going to Powerpuff story meetings, and then they started buying ideas from me. I worked really hard those first two years to make a name for myself, doing storyboards on Powerpuff Girls, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Camp Laszlo. Ooh, as as started... Camp Laszlo was that show on Crip. Camp Laszlo and motherfucking Billy and Mandy was that show on the hood. Making an impression, people realized there was this new person here. Man, you don't be quiet. Years. That's when I pitched Flapjack again. Instead of letting the first build pitch discourage him, Thur picked himself back up and took it all to heart. He worked twice as hard to make a name for himself, and when he finally had the experience of a seasoned cartoonist, around the year 2003, he went back and re-pitched Flapjack, and the studio said yes. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. When got the pitch, he began to get to work, and show running was a lot of work. After spending some years in development, Flapjack finally premiered in 2008. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. I was about eight years old. I was living. I lived in Bron at the time. Uh, I had just moved there. Uh, I remember I used to watch Flapjack. I love watching Flapjack when it was like raining outside and storming. Flapjack was that nigga. Uh, Flapjack was it. The show was a tour de force in animation. The whimsical adventures about a boy named Flapjack and his best friend and role model Captain Knuckles living in the mouth of their whale Bubby and going on adventures in search of a magical candy island seems like so much on paper already. However, it wasn't the show's concept that pulled viewers in, but the writing, tone, and overall surrealness of the show's humor. Flapjack was just so weird and so genuinely funny that anyone watching couldn't stop. The show wasn't afraid to get dark and borderline disturbing when it had to, and was great. <laughs> it really was, bro. It was a creepy little show, but it was it was interesting, for real, for real. Storytelling and writing. 
Fun Jack was monumental in terms of animation. The show employed a ton of mixed media, frequently including stop motion segments and bits to enhance the charm of the show. Like its sister show Shatter, stop motion was done at Scream Novelties, a company out in Hollywood. Ever passionate and ever hardworking, Thurp was known to often go down and animate scenes himself. If you're not convinced of how passionate he is to his craft, he even handmade the puppets in the theme song. According to him, the opening animation is done with real woodcarved puppets. I carved almost all of them and the wooden letters at the top of the show myself when we were doing the pilot, mostly because we didn't have a huge budget. I could gush about- Dang, I didn't know all that. Bro, that nigga had talent, for real, for real. Flapjack for hours, and I will, but it mostly boils down to raw passion. To pull from Flapjack's theme, a good cartoon is often like a ship, a crew of people working exceptionally hard to keep something afloat, and every good ship needs a captain. Thurup was one of the greatest captains in the industry. The show's fan base grew quickly, especially on the internet. Captain Knuckles! Fan art on DeviantArt and other web-based services, which only helped the fan base grow bigger and bigger. It's hard to analyze and put into words why Flapjack was so great, I guess, at the end of the day, I would just say to go watch an episode and see for yourself. But if I were really going to try, I would point to the Emmy-winning episode, Sea Legs. This episode perfectly encapsulates everything that made Flapjack Flapjack, and it literally won an Emmy, so I'm not the only one that liked Dang. it. Dang! to note and something i'll touch on later in this video is the list of people that worked on this episode is incredible pendleton ward jg quintel alex hirsch they all had a hand at some point either boarding or story directing this episode and you can tell i don't know none of those names to work together now would be nearly impossible so to see the three of them work together retroactively is really just a treat and is honestly incredible the story opens with bubbly and flapjack singing to a fish trying to convince the fish to be their friend this perfectly showcases bubby and flapjack's relationship and it's a sweet start to the episode but like any flapjack plotline it gets really weird really fast and they bump into a giant pair of legs floating on a raft now this is a bizarre concept don't touch my legs story, but flapjack's youthful enthusiasm and general curiosity helps the viewer adjust a little bit to the weird situation he excitedly gets captain knuckles and decides that he really wants to help the legs find his owner knuckles is lazy at first but eventually bobby makes him comply with a good amount of slapstick humor this <laughs> here perfectly depicts their character dynamic flapjack's first instinct Knuckles doesn't want to, he's lazy, but Bubby keeps him in check. <laughs> the three of them are the <laughs> She stays laughing the fuck out of the The episode spirals out of control when Flapjack convinces Knuckles to wear the legs in order to help him find the owner. The visual I remember this episode is hilarious on its own, but Flapjack's tendency to steer into the surreal makes the entire concept just that much more hilarious. When they head back to Stormwall Harbor, That's Knuckles nasty. gets greedy with the legs and starts wreaking havoc all across town, much to Flapjack. It's not until he has a spiritual conversation with a fish that admits to just being a part of his own psyche and the return of the top half of the horrifying monster and original owner of the legs. The Flapjack learns what he has to do. Knuckles' greediness ultimately backfires in his own face. The legs essentially destroy Stormwall Harbor, and he even ends up losing his original legs from wishing salts. This is Flapjack in a nutshell. Flapjack is hopeful and tries to help people, and Knuckles abuses that hopeful energy and ultimately pays for it in the end. It's safe to say that you can see a little bit of Flapjack in a lot of cartoons that came after it, both in how surreal the show was able to get, and also how grounded it was. Flapjack was having a conversation with a talking fish, but the conversation was about empathy and emotion. These grounded and strange concepts ultimately are just hilarious, and it's a style of comedy that will be used far into the future. And that's not a coincidence, but we're going to get to that in a second. Flapjack was nominated for plenty of awards during its two-year run from 2008 to 2010. The show ultimately got 46 episodes. Yeah, it didn't last that long. I did notice that it, Flapjack didn't last that long, but it was a really good show, though. Like, bro, nigga, bro, nigga love watching some Flapjack. Episodes, over 91 segments and honestly was one of the weirdest endings in all of television as the decade ended the story of flapjack came to an end and what came after was unprecedented after flapjack ended in 2010 we entered a monumental decade for animation and shortly after flapjack anime started to get real sucky and started to really 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 be bad like now, don't get it messed up. Disney Channel started to take over after the, after that Flapjack time period. That's when, hey, Disney Channel was like, hey, we can hop in this hood. We need to take over the hood. That's when you get all the other stuff. Seeing some of the Good most shows. notorious and influential cartoons of all time and seeing the animation community blossom and grow into something that's bigger and greater than it's ever been before. 2010 really felt like the start of a golden age, one that hasn't really stopped since. And almost all of the notable Wait, hold on. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, 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 hey. Correct yourself. Because 
these cartoons in 2018, 2017 are ass with my chest. I'm ass. Like, terrible. Like, I, I wouldn't even, bro. They make our kids stupid. Back in the day, bro, cartoons had a meaning behind it. They had comedy. And they was actually put their heart into it. Now it's just like they just throw some stuff out there. And it's like, bro, they making our kids stupid. Ugh. I don't even got kids. And I feel like they make my brother. Like, people, bro, it's to the point when people don't even watch TV no more, bro. You remember when people used to just sit down and watch TV, watch cartoons? Niggas don't do that no more. Ugh. Unless you like three. By Blackjack alumni. Adventure time. The biggest show of the day. That hole was hidden. Definitely a cultural phenomenon. And it was hidden. It was created by Pendleton Ward. Prominent writer and storyboarder on Flapjack. Its sister show, Regular Show, was that was hidden too. Success. Regular Show employed that same brand of surreal humor, comedically tied to the monotony of working a minimum wage job, and the show managed to find a huge and passionate audience, both young and old. Regular Show's creator, JG Quintel, was a critic. Yeah, niggas was messing with Regular Show because it had some grown up comedy in there. Yeah, you had to really like sit down and watch and like, oh, did they really just. Oh, okay. The director and the writer. Having two prominent cartoon creators come from one show is honestly not that abnormal in the industry. However, seeing those two shows be such massive phenomenons and huge successes is not something that happens often, but it gets crazier. Cut to 2012. A storyboarder from The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack gets their own cartoon pickup by the House of Mouse, of all places. That man's name was Alex Hirsch. Gravity Falls went on to be a phenomenon. One of the that was a good show, too. Gravity Falls. And is one of the greatest cartoons of all time. He got his start on Flapjack. He even went back and got his old boss Having third voice Will Gideon, one of the show's main antagonists. <laughs> Think it can't get any crazier? In 2014, we get a miniseries, Over the Garden Wall. Huge critical and commercial success. One of the most beloved miniseries and pieces of animation. Of I didn't even know about that. I didn't know about that. I didn't know about them. When they make that, I might have to watch that. That low key little fire. But we, let's just keep, let's keep going. Time still love to this day. That was created by Patrick McHale, a storyboard artist on Flapjack. He even had a Flapjack character cleverly named Punty McHale, based off of him, as terrifying as he is. Do you see the pattern at this point? It's normal to get a brilliant creator or even creators to come out of a show. Stephen Hellenberg worked on Rock Hard Modern Life before creating arguably the biggest cartoon icon since Mickey Mouse. I mean, creators don't just come out of nowhere. They're usually working in the industry before they get their hand at their own show. However, to have this many members of the Flapjack crew go on to create this many prominent cartoons is honestly unprecedented. They all went on to become household names. If anything, the fact that they all worked on the same show at all is, well, marvelous. <sighs> Alright. really just the start. I mean, if uh, you're using this all right. logic, you can thought it was over with. Further. Adventure Time gave us Rebecca Sugar, who went on to make Steven Universe. That divided further to give us OKKO, OK Card of the Creek. Regular Show gave us Owen Dennis and Infinity Train. Gravity Falls led to the Owl House and Infinity. All of these creators are talented and brilliant, and they all deserve their own show. They were just all right, so that's that's really like when cartoons stop being good. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there, because cartoons stop being good after after the regular show and Camp Black, I mean Camp Lazo and um, Gravity Falls. After that, cartoons went downhill. So we're not gonna feel waste our time on the rest of these cartoons because there's not no point. You understand what I'm saying? So I'll be in the video here. See, safe Wolfpack on game. Good, yeah.